What's up, my friends? Welcome to another episode of A1 Podcast. In today's episode, I'm honored to have Derek Godfrey on the show. Derek is a zero entrepreneur that has been founded companies since the age of 15. Since then, he's founded e-commerce, affiliate marketing, and web free companies, just to name a few. He obtained two degrees from University Colorado Boulder, Computer Science and Finance. After graduating from college, Derek developed a diverse skill set working in consulting across the technology, health, and financial industry. He is currently the co-founder and NSHI, a referee company engagement platform for creators that want to build unique experience to their friends. So if you are a content creator and you want to give your friends the ability to invest in you on the world's first referee community engagement platform, turn your content into tokens that grant your supporters exclusive perks with your community, within your community. Fish it and shy.io for its last wait list today. I'm already on that list and I want to be a friend of yours. Let me tell you again, enshrine.io forward slash waitlist, E-N-S-H-R-I-N-D dot I-O forward slash the B-A-I-T-L-I-S-T. Enshrine is limiting access to the first 500 people on their waitlist. For now, let's move on to our conversation with Derek Goffrey. Welcome to the show, Derek. Perfect. Thank you so much for having me. And I'm looking forward to uh, having you be one of our first creators on the platform. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it too. Uh, looking for the product, uh, forward to the product launch. So, before everything, may I ask you how does Enshrine work um, exactly to provide a maybe an overview for the people to know um, what exactly is it? Because I know there are three core features: creator list the digital tokens sell, community determines price, supporter redeems per. But how does it work all together? Can you give us yeah. an overview? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So kind of kind of like you said, uh, the the whole point of the platform is to give content creators the ability to connect directly uh, financially with their supporters. Um, and and so basically what we did is, uh, you know, we, we kind of iterated on what technology we wanted to use uh, to kind of solve this problem. And we eventually landed on, you know, during the NFT hype of uh, 2021 realized that, you know, this technology is actually very good at uh, giving people the ability to control permissions, essentially. So basically how it works from the creator's point of view is you would create a, a token, right? There can be one edition, there can be unlimited, uh, and you can, you can upload kind of any content there. So it could be, you know, we have connections with like Twitch, with Twitter, with Instagram, mm. with Facebook, so you could turn, you know, a famous tweet that you have into an NFT. It could be something that's not on social media. Um, and basically, what you do is you create a token and then create what we are calling uh, community perks. Mm. So that's kind of the whole advantage of using using the platform versus creating a, an NFT on OpenSea. So let's say that you had, mm. like, are you familiar with uh, with Discord? The, mm. the messaging app. So let's say that you have a Discord community and you have a couple of channels that you want to dedicate to your financial backers. So let's say, you mm. know, the financial supporters of the podcast, you would link your Discord server there and basically assign a role to delegate that permission. Um, and that's just one example. So basically, if you want to gate access to content to something, if you want to put... Let's say you have a merch store or something like that. If you want to put a mm. discount code uh, tied to NFT ownership, you can do that. Um, but the whole point of that is that you are creating a token that when mm -hmm. fans purchase it, they have some kind of a benefit for it. So they're investing in you and you are giving back to them through mm -hmm. whatever those perk or perks are. All right. And that's just, yeah, uh, we, we can stop. <laughs> we can stop there and pause if you have questions on that for sure. Mm -hmm. No, just based on what you just said, I've already sure. had tons of questions. Is there a list of maybe social media platform, uh, either Discord, I consider them as social media platform too, mm -hmm. maybe, or Twitter, or um, maybe even LinkedIn, Facebook. Uh, they are, uh, they can be integrated to Enshry so that whenever I create something on this social media platform, uh, maybe just a tweet from on Twitter, do I have to download it and then upload it on Enshry? What is the workflow for the creator? 
Yeah. So it, it, we actually make it very easy. So there's no need to, you know, mm. download a screenshot or, or something of like a tweet <laughs> or something yeah. on Facebook. Uh, basically, mm. all you do is you link your account to your Enshrine account. And then mm. you go in and select whichever, you know, post tweets uh, we integrate with Spotify. So it could be song, playlist, uh, really any of the major social media platforms we're looking to integrate with. You would just select that post and then we go in and do all the hard work of converting that into, you know, if it's a video, downloading that video for you. If it's, a, you know, an image, it's an image and we oh. take care of all the downloading and everything so you don't have to touch it. You just select it and uh, boom, it's there in your, in your token. It's a gossip. Uh, that's the message I need to hear from you. So does the creator have to care about the NFT quality on the platform? Because uh, I know you does all the hard work and shine, does all the hard work mm -hmm. in between. It is a kind of like a middle layer between the social media platform and the blockchain. Uh, do, yeah. do I, if I were a creator, when I upload any um, content, either image, video, a test mm -hmm. on the social media platform, do I have to bear anything in mind? Because I know there's uh, some NFT standard, like uh, the contract standard, IP, uh, IPFS story, those kind of things. Do I have to care right. about that? Uh, absolutely not. So we designed the platform so that you have to know absolutely nothing about the underlying technology. So you have, let's say you have no idea what NFTs are, you've never had a crypto wallet, there is absolutely no reason that you would even have to know that the underlying technology is NFTs. Um, the, the reason we, we kind of landed on Web3 technologies and, and NFTs as the backing of all of this. Uh, because it's a very good tool to give creators and their fans like the ownership of ownership of the actual mm. NFT, right? So if you post something to Facebook or to Twitter, they mm. have a lot of control. Like technically, it is yours, right? It's on your account, but they have the ability to take it down at any point that they want to. Mm -hmm. uh, on our platform, we are explicitly making it so that we cannot delete. Uh, the mm. NFT right after it's created, like it is completely controlled by you or the fan. Um, we have no influence over that. And so it does give a lot more power to the creators. Um, and then in terms of like you'd brought up, you know, IPFS and, and whatever the contract standards are that we're using, mm -hmm. uh, our team has done a lot of work to make sure that we are on, you know, the cutting edge of whatever the most recent uh, for tokens, right? The most recent ERC-20 token standard. Mm -hmm. uh, for IPFS, right, we're going with IPFS storage for everything because, again, it's decentralized. It's more expensive for us to do that, but it is the right way to create an NFT. So for those that are mm -hmm. interested, you know, we could go on for like an hour for, for why our, our platform <laughs> is doing it the right way, even when mm -hmm. it is more difficult and more expensive. Uh, but if you're a creator that knows nothing about it and you don't really care, you know, that's fine too. Like the platform is still built for you. Um, and in the future, like, you know, five years down the line when Web3 and crypto are, are a lot more, you know, standard, uh, the tokens will still be out there. They'll still work mm -hmm. how you're expecting them to. And, you know, at that point, you'll be glad that you chose, you know, us over potentially other platforms. Mm, that's like, uh, that's what I need to hear from you from the perspective of the audience, because so many of them, they are not technical. Uh, sure. So I, yeah, I can imagine that. Uh, so it's, it is like if I have a Twitter account, I have many followers. Uh, just imagine if I were a musician and I post a two minute song on Twitter and then it mm -hmm. becomes a Twitter storm, everyone likes it so that I can uh, hop on to the Enshrine portal uh, either mobile or web app, I don't know. Uh, I can uh, pull this tweet into a, uh, and make it as an as an NFT. And I can mm -hmm. turn this content into tokens, choose ownership per initial price, the number of addition. I can make all the configuration about this piece of NFT. I can do all yeah. that, right? Mm. Oh, absolutely. And uh, yeah, to, to answer your question, it is like web-based. So we support, you know, desktop, tablet, mobile, all of mm -hmm. that. It's, it's optimized for all three of those. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, any, any piece of content, right? Like it's, it's a common thing, right? You'll have a, a tweet mm -hmm. that kind of blows up and it's the most trending thing. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you're able to kind of in minutes, if you want to kind of capitalize on that. Uh, mm -hmm. There are some tweets out there that would be, you know, people would be 
happy to pay for the ability to own them. Mm. Right. Like the Jack Dorsey, the the founder of Twitter or one of the founders of Twitter, uh, sold his first tweet for it was like something mm. like one and a half million dollars or something a couple years ago, which you know, not everyone is gonna get one and a half million dollars for their tweets, but like there is, you know, it it is internet history, right? There are some mm. things where it is just it does create such a, like you said, like a storm on Twitter where uh, it becomes famous and it could turn into something else completely. Cool. So I can assume the quality on Enshry and Twitter, uh, pick it back on our example we just talked about, mm -hmm. the quality of the uh, identical, as long as, uh, even though they are on the blockchain by the blockchain standard, because for the musician or whoever frogger they are making video they are making uh, music they care they are doing sound engineering they are doing mm -hmm. video engineering you care yeah. about engineering so to their perspective the quality of these two things it is just like a copy on enshrine blockchain am i correct yeah exactly so in the case it's of twitter cool. we at the time that you're creating that token mm -hmm. will basically just grab like a, essentially a screenshot using Twitter's API so that it looks exactly mm. like if you saw, you know, when you see a tweet like reposted on, let's say Facebook or some other site, it'll look a certain way. Basically, we are taking that image. Um, and then in the case of, like you said, like sound files, uh, mm. we don't do any sort of compression or anything. Like when you upload mm. to, you know, Facebook, they do image compression and sound yes. compression. Uh, we take exactly purpose, what you give yeah. us. Yeah, so we, we do actually have, um, at the moment, a limit of like a 100 megabyte file. So for long form videos, mm -hmm. uh, we can't support that right now. And that's mostly a limitation of IPFS uh, mm. because, because of how it, it works, right? Large files are difficult to distribute if they are that big. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, exactly whatever quality you're giving, we're able to take that put it on IPFS and it is now, you know, permanently enshrined. Mm. That's why we called it that um, on the blockchain. That's cool. Uh, I want to uh, move on to the second uh, second feature of enshrine. Sure. Community determines price. Mm, yeah. Can you uh, talk about the this feature? Uh, maybe, yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So when you're creating that initial token, uh, the mm. creator will set a price. Right now, we only provide the option to do a fixed price, but on our roadmap is adding the option to do an auction. So in that case, mm. if it's an auction, right, the community at the time of sale determines how much it's worth. Mm. Um, but for the time being, we don't have that. Mm. After it is initially sold, uh, mm. we'll, we'll then have a secondary marketplace. So mm. let's say that you, you know, you sell a token and you priced it for mm. $5. Mm -hmm. And let's say that you only had 100 editions of it. And then you realize that after it sells out in you mm. know 30 seconds that it's actually a very popular token. Mm. Uh, whoever owns that, right, they have the ability to either hold on to it, they can transfer it to a different wallet if they want to, um, or they can resell it on our platform. So mm. basically, you know, it, it creates a literal marketplace for the goods that you are creating. Um, and in mm. the case of your content, right, we're creating a, an economy for each individual creator and their community can come in there and, you know, either increase the price if people are willing to pay more or if it <sighs> sold for a ton. And then for some reason, maybe the perks expire or something like that. And then it decreases in value. Uh, that's entirely up to the community. We don't have any control over that. Lovely. So basically it is like a stock market. So if I uh, doing the uh, token creation, I set my NFT to be on sale so that when it is on sale in the first market, so I receive a uh, royalty based, we see royalty payments based on that. Once uh, I sold it, it goes to the secondary market. So the whoever sells it, so that it is on the secondary market. Uh, so yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So we on the initial sale, because we actually have to create the token, um, we actually only do debit mm. and credit cards right now. So it, it's basically very easy for people to pay versus having to have to have a wallet. Um, mm. But we have to create, you know, we have to process the credit card or debit card. Uh, we have to create the actual token. We have to host the media on IPFS. So initially you would be making 90% uh, of whatever the total sale value is. And mm. that 10% that covers 
the entire platform fee, credit card processing fees, chargebacks, all of that. Um, and then from there, so you receive 90%. Anytime it's resold, you have the ability when you're creating the token to specify, uh, I mean, exactly like you said, in token standards, it's called a royalty. So mm -hmm. people are probably familiar with that with, uh, you know, creators, uh, musicians will typically have royalties on their songs. Mm -hmm. uh, people that were in movies will typically have royalties on whenever that thing is aired. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it really depends. So it's, uh, they took that concept and you basically write it into the actual token definition so that any time that that is resold, mm. uh, whatever percentage that you specify is sent directly to you. And we don't put any fees on top of that for you, right? We'll charge uh, whoever's reselling it. I think the fee right mm. now is is 5%. So that 3% covers mm. credit card transaction fees. The 2% uh, is to facilitate the transaction and keep the platform running. Um, mm. So then let's say you specify 20%, you would make 90% from the first sale and then 20% of every sale after that, which if you're a popular creator and that, you know, changes mm. hands five times, you could see a case where you end up making more than the original sale price um, mm. on the exact same item. Nice. We just mentioned uh, payment transaction. Uh, may I ask what is the mechanism behind the feature? Transact in fiat, not crypto. The reason why sure. I'm asking this is maybe I'm a musician, I'm an artist, I don't give a shit about all the crypto things behind, but mm -hmm. uh, what kind of heavy work uh, and shy does behind the scene to make it happen? Yeah, definitely. So from your point of view as the pur mm. person purchasing the NFT, you... Mm. Enter in your credit card information. We're partnering with Stripe for that. So it's exactly like buying, you know, mm. anything else online, right? You enter your credit card information, you get the thing. Mm. On our end, uh, in order to, it's, it's a little bit different. Let's just say it's off of like an NFT mint. So we actually have to create the NFT. Mm. We will take the, the money that you gave us. We'll already have, uh, we're on the Polygon blockchain. So we basically have to have uh, the token is Matic. Uh, we'll mm. have to purchase the Matic to actually make the transaction. Mm. We will submit that transaction to the network, which, um, you know, as, as some of your listeners are probably aware, that mm. varies based on the load on the network. So it might be, you know, a dollar to do a transaction at one point. Mm. At another time, it might be 50 cents. If it's mm. really busy, it might be like $2. So we handle, right, we, we try and optimize it so that the actual token gets minted at not peak times. Um, oh wow yeah so we'll be a little bit dynamic there um mm. so that that helps us save a little bit on fees but it's also you know better for the environment if there's less uh not trying to build up more congestion on the network uh it'll mm. be a little bit better in that sense uh and then we will have to then put whatever content you gave us onto ipfs mm. and so we'll have to pay you know ipfs to put it there uh, we have to pay ongoing fees to keep that content hosted on IPFS. So we also handle that on the back end. Uh, we manage the minting all the way through. And then all you'll receive when you purchase it is just a confirmation saying, we minted your token, here it is. And then we provide you links to go and view the mm. actual transaction on the blockchain. So there's a lot of stuff that goes on behind the scene. There's a lot of stuff <laughs> that goes into preparing for that whole process. Mm. Um, and you as a creator have to know none of that, right? So if you mm. just kind of, uh, you know, you could have listened to the like five minute explanation <laughs> or not completely fine. If you're interested, that's great. If not, you know, we'll handle it. Got it, beautiful. So basically Enshrine care about the artists uh, and then, but I am an artist, I care about my supporters. So let's move mm -hmm. on to the supporter redeems sure. per, which is the third feature, third core feature of Enshrine. Yep. So, yeah, the course platform integration allow creators to offer a variety of ownership perks. Perks can be one time, for example, ticket events or single use discount codes or ongoing. Uh, for example, say Discord role or access to uh, gated content. What platforms mm -hmm. are you referring to? Any examples of for this kind of perks? Yeah, we have a, a lot of platforms on our backlog. Um, mm. Right now we have, uh, I'd kind of explained that uh, the Discord integration earlier. So that's one of the ongoing ones that would be, you know, I 
subscribe on some other platform and I've given a role. Mm -hmm. uh, we're doing the exact same thing, but uh, tied to token ownership instead of a subscription. Um, you could also, we allow for uh, private content hosting on our site. So let's say that can be anything from, you know, a discount code. You would enter in a discount code when you're creating the, the perk. Mm. Um, and then when whoever, you know, when you purchase the token, you can then click, you know, redeem code. You're given a discount code for the, your merch store, whatever it is. Um, that's an example of like a one-time offering there. Uh, but really the reason that our sort of focus is so much on that third feature, right? The community engagement mm. feature yes. is like, that is, that is a way for creators to kind of offer unique experiences for their fans, right? Like if you have someone that's a very high budget creator and they have say like a, a whole, you know, private discord, or they have a whole like mm. webinar course or something that you have to purchase access to, um, you know, that, that's something currently that you have to be on different platforms to kind of handle. The goal for oh. us is to make it easy for the creator to be able to enable all those, all that access, all that, you know, whatever you want to tie to the token all on one platform. Mm. And then on the fan side, it's also seamless, right? They will link their discord account, click redeem, and we handle everything for them. So when next mm. time they go on the discord, they'll have that role. Um, so really, you know, we, we kind of see that as the future of, you know, how creators are engaging with their communities. You know, yes. before it was a lot of, you know, on, we're, we're focusing on streamers, uh, mostly for the time being. So video game streamers, right? A lot of the focus is on stream, interacting with chat. And, and we kind of see the future of this community engagement is whatever goes beyond the stream, right? Mm. Like in-person events. Uh, five years ago, if you would have said there would be Twitch streamers that would have like 10,000 people fly out to go to a live in-person event with them. Uh, mm. A lot of people wouldn't have believed you. They would have said that you're crazy. Um, <laughs> but that actually is happening today, right? Like people are, you know, they're, they're celebrities basically, right? Like creators are, are, are modern celebrities. Um, and people are people want more interaction with them, right? They want unique ways to kind of interact with them and their content. Totally agree. I can see that too. Um, is that the key differentiator of uh, Enshry comparing to uh, Oversea and Magic Eden? Because mm, I'm still making my mind around all of these. Sure. Uh, yeah. What are, yeah, what, what are the difference I, between, yeah. Yeah, definitely. I, I think OpenSea is a really good example. So they mm. are, you know, the, the largest, NFT marketplace. Mm -hmm. uh, they are a fantastic option for people that are already in the Web3 space. Mm -hmm. And I, I think today, I think this is still the case that you can still only transact in cryptocurrency on OpenSea. Mm -hmm. Sort of the, the first and main one is just, if I am creating on OpenSea, I'm getting paid out in cryptocurrency and whoever my supporters are, are paying in cryptocurrency, mm -hmm. which for some creators, like their community is already in that space and that's completely fine. Um, for others, entering in a credit card is just a lot easier, and some creators want to be paid out in fiat, not crypto. So that's a big one. Mm -hmm. um, another one is tying in the sort of the perk integrations and the platform integrations. Oh. So if you go on OpenSea, mm -hmm. there's not going to be that integration with Twitter, right? There's not going to be an integration with Twitch or Spotify or any of these platforms. Mm -hmm. So you would have to go in and you maybe take a screenshot of the tweet and you can sell it that way. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> There's no easy way to do it. There's no standard way to do it. Mm -hmm. And then with the on the you know the flip side of the integrations, if you wanted to say set up Discord access to be tied as a perk to a token, um, OpenSea doesn't support that, right? You'd have to build that yourself, mm -hmm. which it's not it's not an easy thing to do to start mm -hmm. doing these custom contracts and and integrations with different providers. Mm -hmm. um, so we're trying to make it just as easy as possible for those perk integrations. So those are kind of those the three top reasons for it being uh, a little bit different. We're also focusing less on like the, the speculation market. I would say uh, OpenSea is a very good place to go and see, you know, the price history of NFTs and people are trying to figure out what ones are going to, you know, 10 X after they buy them. Uh, we, you know, you could do that on our platform, but we don't have a huge emphasis on the price of the NFT. The emphasis is more on 
the creator, right? And mm. and the interactions that you can have with that creator. So the focus is a little bit different as well. Got it. Beautiful. So um, before um, we wrap up this session, uh, is there uh, anything uh, other than the, we encourage the people to uh, join the wait list? Is there any last mm -hmm. message you want to let the audiences know? Yeah, definitely. So we have that wait list on the site. Um, I'm also extremely open to kind of connecting with creators to kind of understand mm -hmm. what their what their experience is with you know community engagement. Like, what are they currently doing? What are the challenges that they're seeing? Is there anything that maybe you wish existed, um, but maybe mm -hmm. there isn't something that quite fits that? Because um, we're really you know we're we're all the founding team. The people working on it are all huge fans of, of creators, right? And the creator economy, like a lot of us watch, you know, Twitch streamers or YouTube streamers, whatever it is, others like, you know, YouTube content creators, but but basically, we are all very, you know, passionate about people that are kind of foregoing the the traditional like nine to five career, like yourself, like not going into an office, you're going out there and you're making content all by yourself. And that's a difficult thing. Um, but mm. a lot of people are very passionate about it. So we care a lot about making their journey to being a full time creator easier, um, mm. and making their fans happier, right with with their experience with them. So we want to know like what, like I said, what are your challenges? What things would help you engage with your community better? Is there anything on our site that is like, you know, confusing or that you want to see different? Uh, hmm. feel free to reach out to me, right? Like, uh, I'm sure you'll, you'll link, uh, my bio or, or whatever in the show notes, but feel hmm. free, look me up, send me a message. I respond to you know, everyone that reaches out to me. So definitely I'm, I'm happy to set up time with you. Uh, you know, if, if you're curious about our platform or our offerings, or just, you know, tell me about what you've done as a creator and, and what you're looking to do. Lovely. Uh, so the important message to the audience, I think, I try to paraphrase it, is uh, you have the ability to affect and size product roadmap because yeah. of your uh, um, user feedback. And I would like to encourage you that because I uh, I was a product manager and I'm still a product manager. And uh, I often gave many feed, uh, product feedback to whatever platform or product that I am using. Just be mm -hmm. generous with your time and your feedback because you are the user. And uh, yeah. if you can make the product greater, you are the direct beneficiary. So just do it. So uh, thank you for uh, coming up on our podcast to talk about the creator economy, Derek. Uh, it is a really an enjoyable conversation. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. So uh, for the audiences, until next time. <laughs>